Hi everyone, I'm Wyatt and welcome back to our FRC Java tutorial series. Today we'll be going into a brief overview of inheritance and abstract classes. This is a pretty advanced topic, so don't expect anything too in-depth, but I did think it was definitely worth going over so that you guys can understand its purpose when we see it in robot code. Once again, we'll start off by creating a new Replit project. This time, we'll be creating a few classes to represent several different animals. We'll start off by creating the animal class. The animal class will be what we call an abstract class. An abstract class is a class where some of the methods are only declared but not defined. That is, we'll give some methods a name, return type, and parameters, but never actually write any code for them. Let's see what that looks like. Since the animal class is an abstract class, we'll start off by writing abstract class animal. Abstract, of course, will indicate that this is an abstract class. Next, we'll write an abstract method by writing abstract void make noise. We give it the keyword abstract, then a return type, a name for the method, and we could give it parameters, but in this case we don't need parameters for this method. Since we're not giving this method any code, we're going to end it with a semicolon instead of the curly brackets to indicate to the compiler that there's no code in this method. Let's examine this example for a minute. If I were to ask you what noise an animal makes, you'd probably be pretty confused and you'd first ask me what animal we're talking about because the noise varies from animal to animal. And that's exactly what the compiler is doing. It doesn't know what noise an animal makes, but it knows that all animals can make some kind of noise. For example, we'll make a cow class later and that cow class will have the make noise method that will say moo. But before we move on to the cow class, we'll write one more method for this animal cl class. One thing all animals do is eat, so let's write a method for eating. We'll write public void eat, and we'll just write this like we would with any other method, and just print to the terminal om nom nom. Abstract classes can still have non-abstract methods. This non-abstract eat method will carry over into all classes that are animals, as we'll see later. Next, let's move on to the cow class. We'll make a new file called cow.java, and we'll start off like we usually do when making a class by writing public class cow. But this time, we'll add extends animal. Extends animal tells the compiler that cow is a subclass of class animal, so the cow class can use any non-abstract methods that were contained in the animal class. For example, the cow class can already use the eat method, even though we haven't written any code in this class. However, since we are a subclass of class animal, we have to implement this make noise method. So we can't make any cows until we write a make noise method. To do this, all we have to do is write public, followed by the same return type as the method in the animal class with the same exact name and the same parameters of the same types. Since we don't have parameters for our make noise method, we won't need any parameters. Then we'll just add in a print statement and tell the cow to moo. You might be wondering what some advantages of using abstract classes are. One of these advantages is that if we wanted to make lots of animal classes, we would save ourselves lots of time in, since we wouldn't have to rewrite this eat method. There's one more big advantage. If you remember from the last video, I mentioned that you can only fill arrays in Java with objects of the same type. So if we wanted to make an array of farm animals that contains both 
cows from this cow class we wrote, and pigs from another pig class we might write, we wouldn't be able to do that. However, since they both extend the abstract class animal, we could make an array of animals and fill that array with both cows and pigs, which could be very useful. So let's move on to writing that pig class. The pig class will be exactly the same as the cow class, except we'll replace moo with oink. So I'll just fast forward a bit and show you the finished product. All right, so now that we have our pig class, let's go back into the main.java file and create a few cows and pigs so that we can see how the code runs. First, we'll make a cow named Tim. We'll tell Tim to eat, and we'll tell him to make noise. Next, let's make another cow named Jim, but this time we'll assign him to a variable of type animal. Again, we'll tell him to eat and make noise. Finally, we'll make a pig named Kim, assign her to a variable of type animal, and tell her to eat and make noise, just like Tim and Jim. Alright, so now, now that we have those lines of code written, let's run the code and see what it outputs. So first, let's look at Tim. He is a cow, and he is, his variable is of type cow. So what the code did is it went, oh, Tim is a cow. Let's check and see if he has an eat method. He didn't have an eat method, but since he extends animal, the code went and checked, and there's an eat method in the animal class. So it performed the eat method that was contained in the animal class. Next, we told Tim to make noise. So the code just went straight to the cow class, checked to, to see if it had a make noise method, and since it did, it ran that method. Next, let's look at Jim. Even though the variable is type animal, the code knows that Jim is actually a cow. So his code ran in exactly the same order that Tim's code did. So when we told him to eat, it checked the cow class, didn't see anything, so then ran the eat method from the animal class. And when we told him to make noise, it just went straight to the cow class and ran that make noise method. Finally, we have Kim. Kim ran exactly the same how Jim ran, but she ran the methods from the pig class, of course. So we told her to eat. There was no eat method in the pig class, so it went to the animal class and ran that method. And we told her to make noise. And she went straight to the pig class and ran that method. Before we end the video, I wanted to just quickly bring up one more topic, which is interfaces. I won't show you any code with interfaces, but if you ever hear about them, just know that an interface is basically an abstract class if all of the methods were abstract. All right, and that's it for our last intro to Java video. That was a lot of content that we covered in these six videos, but hopefully now you have a solid foundation of Java so that you can understand what's going on when we get into the robot code. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to install the tools required to use FRC Java code. And then we can finally start getting into writing our very first robot code. Thank you all for watching and have a fantastic day.